Hey everyone, Matt here with Night Run Studio, and in this let's make a tower defense game in Unity tutorial, we're going to get our enemies moving toward our tower so they can actually do some attacking. Let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need is just to make sure that you've got your enemy. He's going to need to have a rigid body and box collider. And let's create our first script. So I'll head down to our assets folder here, where I'm actually going to create a new folder called scripts. I'll go into that folder and I'm just going to right click, create, C sharp script, and let's call this first one robot movement. Normally you can just double click that to open it up, but if you haven't set up your external editor, you could go to Unity, Preferences, and under external tools at the very top where it says script editor, you can set that up to Visual Studio or whatever IDE you happen to be using. With that done, you should be able to just double click the script to open it in whatever application you're using. Now in this one, what we want to do is make our robot move left towards the tower and our defender. You remember earlier that we added a rigid body to handle physics, and so we're just going to head right up to the top of the script here and let it know that it's going to be talking to that rigid body. We can do this by typing public rigid body 2D, because it's a rigid body 2D we're going to be talking to, and then we just need to give it a name, which is what we'll refer to it by in the rest of this script. So we'll call it robot RB. If I pop back into Unity now, we could click on a robot. We can add this new script, robot movement, and you'll notice now because we made it public, there's now a box here asking, well, which rigid body is robot RB? And so we can go up to the top, click rigid body 2D, and just drag it down into that box. Our script now knows which rigid body to talk to. Now the start method, as the name suggests, runs whenever this object is initialized. We don't actually need it to do anything at initialization, so we can just delete that method. Now we can head down into update, which is called constantly throughout the game, so it's a good place to do something like make movement happen. So here, we're just going to type robot RB, because we're going to talk to our rigid body, and we want to set its velocity. In Unity, velocity is often set through a vector 2, which is just a x and y value, which are the horizontal and vertical values. In Unity, you can see it here in our transform under its position. And so if we set it to 1, that would have it moving to the right. That's our x value. A negative 1 would move to the left. And then for our y value, a positive value would have it move up, and a negative would move down. Fortunately, though, Unity has created some shortcuts here. So we can just do vector2.left which would be the same as a negative 1, 0. In our game, if we put this in, we're now moving the left constantly, which works all right, but you'll notice it's kind of slow. We don't have any control over it. And it's also a little bit jerky. So let's fix that. First off, we're currently working within our update method, which is called once per frame. However, different computers will fire more frames per second than others, especially high-end computers. Similarly, if there's a lot going on, sometimes frame rate will drop which means we get inconsistent movement. Unity has something called fixed update, which runs exactly 50 times per second. And so when we're handling things like movement, which we want to be really smooth, fixed update is the better place to put it. We're also going to make another variable here. This one will be a public integer, which is just a whole number, and we'll call it speed. So now we can come down here and we can multiply our leftward movement times speed. So the larger our speed, the faster it will move. It'll start at zero. And so when I press play, it won't move as it's now multiplying our movement times zero, so it's zero. But if we turn it to one, we'll get our initial speed. We can also go with larger numbers here now to speed up. We could move backwards with a negative number, or if we want to get in between, we could try a decimal like 1.5. But you'll notice that didn't work. That's because we set this up as an integer, which won't take decimals. A quick tweak to our code. And we can turn this from a public integer into a public float, which will allow decimals. Now with that change, we can put 1, or we could try a decimal value like 1.5, 1.6. We could use negative values to move to the right, that sort of thing. All right, with that done, we've now got some pretty good movement happening. In the next video, we'll set up some collisions so we can actually start dealing some damage. Until then, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.